Brethren, who can tell me who all United States Masonic Lodges are dedicated to? You can draw your own conclusions, and a lot of it comes from the Bible. It was then normal for the stonecutters, the hewers, the apprentices, fellow craft, and master masons to observe the feasts and festivals of the church and communities that they were working on. Christianity, in its attempts to convert pagans at the same time, had incorporated many of the pagan rituals renamed as Christian rites. In particular, various seasonal events, planting and harvest times, equinoxes, solstices, they were celebrated by the pagans with uh, elab elaborated ceremonies and celebrations. The church substituted patron saints days and festival celebrations for the old. Masonry in the United States now celebrates two saints days with one being more dominant than the other. St. John the Baptist Day is celebrated on June 24th or the solstices or around the solstice the 21st but generally on the 24th. And uh, he, St. John the Baptist has had the longest association with masonry. Um, and we'll learn about the evangelists as well because he, you know that when we say of the Holy Saints John, we're speaking of two people. We're speaking of St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist. So, um, there are documents dating from the mid-14th century um, in Latin, and they were dug up in France. Um, and, uh, and even back then, in, in 14, that would, be, uh, that would be the 15th century. But um, even back then, they were dedicating lodges to St. John the Baptist um, as far back as, you know, almost 600 years. Uh, it wasn't until the Reformation times, um, post-1600, that the evangelist, St. John the Evangelist, was included. And, and uh, we dedicated our lodge to St. John, with a plural. So anyway, when I began research on this topic, I received uh, answers from a few when, when I asked them, why, why do Masons dedicate their lodges to the Holy Saints, John? And I received uh, answers from a few different people saying that uh, because they're great men. I can show that inquisitiveness is part of Masonry and a balanced path to enlightenment. All right, so who's who? St. John the Baptist, we'll start with. He came first. He was born six months before Jesus Christ. He was, well, that, and that puts it right at the summer solstice where St. John the Baptist Day is. Um, and uh, so they coexisted. They all coexisted, in fact. St. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and St. John the Evangelist. They all lived throughout the same time. Um, St. John the Baptist was, according to the, the, uh, St. John's Gospel, sent from God to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. He was a revered man, for his zeal for God and would encourage those around him to repent in order for peace with God and oneself. Mind you, he was preaching this before Christ came on the scene. However, always proclaiming that a Messiah greater than him will soon arrive. He says in the Bible, he it is who is coming after me is preferred. In conclusion, I'm going to try to tie some of these things up and make sense of all this and uh, draw some parallels. Um, what's hard to gather here from this very brief synopsis is that the St. John's were quite opposite each other. Um, the Baptist having more an innate sense of God and actively um, purveying his beliefs through baptisms and sermons. And we see the evangelist more um, in his youth with a hot temper, taking on the teachings of Jesus Christ and becoming more tranquil and, and more of a meditative, reflective person and, and, and really becoming a, a strong proponent of brotherly love um, in the end. Um, they were born on opposite ends of the calendar. The Baptist, being, uh, the Baptist being born on the solstice, the longest day of light in the year. The Evangelist born on the winter solstice, the day with the longest darkness. Um, so, what is the significance of this pair of opposites? Um, in masonry, we have a lot of opposites. We have a lot of parallels, and they all symbolize things, you know, that we can, we can learn from. 